But this evening, for a few minutes, I want to share a bit about diplomacy in black and white and how some of its findings may inform our understanding of U.S. diplomacy today. 215 years ago, 215 years ago this month, Toussaint Louverture, the leader of a revolution on the island of Saint-Domingue, wrote a letter to President Adams. It was not uncommon in the 1790s for the President of the United States to get letters from overseas. It was, however, unique that President Adams received a letter from a leader of African descent who had once been owned by another man. Louverture was the leader of the Haitian Revolution, a movement by enslaved Africans on the French Caribbean island known as Saint-Domingue. In August of 1791, Matthew, in August of 1791, some 500,000 enslaved Africans began their fight against French overseers and colonial leaders, first for emancipation, then for independence. The revolution lasted from 1791 to 1804. And if you've never heard of Saint-Domingue, if you've never heard of Saint-Domingue, that is because Saint-Domingue ceased to exist on January the 1st, 1804, when the revolutionaries, victorious, declared the independence of Haiti and joined the United States as only the second republic of the Western Hemisphere at that time. In 1804, Elizabeth, there were millions, millions of Africans who remained enslaved across the Atlantic world. I believe that the United States deserves much more credit than it, than it has given itself for the establishment of Haiti as a country. I wrote Diplomacy in Black and White. Bill, I, both, I wrote Diplomacy in Black and White in an effort to inform and to remind Americans that we have the capacity to, to affect the lives of others in extraordinary ways. The United States has viewed itself as an exceptional nation since its founding. This worldview of exceptionalism remains intact to this very day. In the in the method of any good Baptist preacher or any professor worth his salt, for a few minutes I'm going to uh, illuminate three findings in my book that I think are appropriate for American foreign policy today. The first, the first finding from Diplomacy in Black and White highlights an, un an understated diplomatic device. The United States should not overlook opportunities to affirm and respect others. When Louverture drafted his letter to Adams, and he, ended, and he ended it with these words, please receive the assurance of my highest consideration. In that language, in that language we see Louverture demonstrating his affirmation and respect for President Adams and to assure that these sentiments were translated across cultural and, and, and language barriers, he trusted an ally, a representative, to hand carry this letter. President Adams reciprocated this affirmation and respect. President Adams twice dined with Louverture's Dominican, I'm sorry, Dominican representative at the president's house. Secretary of State Timothy Pickering likewise illustrated affirmation and respect for Louverture's government. Pickering responded directly to that November 1798 letter, and here I want to read directly from the book. Several months later, when Pickering became the first Secretary of State to send official diplomatic correspondence to a black government leader, he again extended with ease such gentlemanly courtesies to Louverture closing the letter, the letter with an expression common among 18th century gentry. I am with due consideration, sir, your obedient servant. It seems ironic that while slavery prevailed in the U.S. Capitol, a white U.S. Cabinet Secretary would refer to himself as the servant of a black man who had once been enslaved. 
American and Dominican officials reached across cultural and language barriers to affirm and respect one another. The second finding from Diplomacy in Black and White is this. Risk and opposition should not deter sound diplomatic efforts. Adams and Louverture understood the risk involved for a revolutionary colony that had abolished slavery to seek a relationship with a slaveholding nation. Both leaders realized that white American slaveholders, like Thomas Jefferson, opposed a Dominican American alliance. Among other things, Cheyenne, among other things, Southern slaveholders lived under a real and present danger that the enslaved Africans in America would find inspiration from the Haitian Revolution to rise up and to kill their white American slaveholders. This was their reality. Adams and Louverture met the risk and the opposition directly and collaborated to overcome these fears. Louverture sent that November 17, 1798 letter by the hand of a white Dominican representative who was a former slaveholder who was now married to a black Dominican woman. Secretary Pickering used the white Dominican representative to talk directly to southern slaveholding congressmen to convince them that Louverture had no interest in overturning American slavery. I'll read the results of their plan directly from the book. The bill of authorizing Adams to trade and treat with Louverture passed the House of Representatives on 28 January 1799. The 16 votes cast by Southern legislators were not only significant but decisive. Key pro-slavery Southerners such as Robert Goodloe Harper and Thomas Pinckney, Pinckney came to see Louverture as a man to be trusted and San Dominican independence as something not wholly to be feared. The administration's leg legislative prowess in passing the Intercourse Act elicited surprise from its arch enemy, Thomas Jefferson, who could hardly believe that even, so even South Carolinians in the House of Representatives voted for it. The third finding from Diplomacy in Black and White, small steps of diplomacy can lead to great strides in international relationships. Louverture wrote that November 1798 letter to Adams after the U.S. Congress had passed a trade embargo on Saint-Domingue. The U.S. decision to close off American trade hurt the Saint-Domingue economy and the Dominican people. Louverture's initiative opened the door to a limited, achievable goal, the reopening of American trade with Saint-Domingue. The two governments achieved this reopening of trade, but from this trade, Dominican-American relations expanded to consider more difficult issues like the independence and statehood of a black government, the influence of the Haitian Revolution on American slavery, and the beliefs of white Americans regarding racial superiority and, and, and inferiority. I believe that diplomacy in black and white relates a story of an exceptional relationship between revolutionary peoples of different cultures and colors. After Adams's electoral defeat to Thomas Jefferson in 1800, and Louverture's death in 1803, the United States and Haiti would not again have direct government ties until President Lincoln sent a consul to Port-au-Prince in 1802, 1862 in the midst of the American Civil War.